Well, today, the day after a judge issued a gag order directly to Donald Trump, who was sitting right in front of the judge in a New York courtroom, Donald Trump decided to leave that courtroom and leave town. That's how well that gag order worked. New York State's Attorney General Letitia James, who brought the civil fraud, fraud case against Donald Trump, told the news media, the Donald Trump show is over after Donald Trump left the building. And so Mr. Trump is no longer here. The Donald Trump show is over. This was nothing more than a political stunt, a fundraising stop. And now we can continue to fo go forward with our trial, and we are confident that justice will be served. Fake tough guy Donald Trump did not dare disobey the judge's gag order today, which orders Donald Trump to not say a word about the judge's staff and the court personnel. So now we have proof that gag orders on Donald Trump can work. The gag order specifically did not restrict Donald Trump's comments about Attorney General Letitia James or the judge himself. And so in his performances for the news media going in and out of the courtroom, Donald Trump attacked the Attorney General and the judge, mostly by calling them Democrats. Because it is a civil trial, Donald Trump is under no requirement to attend the trial. And so most members of the news media knew that Donald Trump was lying at the courthouse today when he said, I'm here, stuck here. I'd rather be right now in Iowa. I'd rather be in New Hampshire, South Carolina, or Ohio, or a lot of other places, but I'm stuck here. Donald Trump's decision, not long after that, to stop being stuck there proved that that statement was a lie for anyone who didn't already know it was a lie. And because Donald Trump is uniquely stupid and because he tells so many lies, he cannot possibly keep track of his own lies. Exactly 100 seconds after Donald Trump said that he was stuck there, he forgot that lie when he was asked why he was attending the trial. Why attend? Because I want to point it out to the press how corrupt it is. And with that answer, Donald Trump foolishly admitted to exactly what Attorney General James accused him of, coming to the courthouse just to put on a show for the press outside of the courtroom. Attorney General James said that Donald Trump speaking to the press in the hallway was just a political stunt. And she called it, quote, a fundraising stop. And once again, Donald Trump proved Letitia James right by sending out this desperate fundraising email at 2.01 p.m. Friend, I just left the courthouse for the day for my unjust trial in New York. Please make a contribution of any amount, truly, even just one dollar. So there's the defendant who Attorney General Letitia James says claims to be richer than he is, claims he's a big billionaire, begging people for even just one dollar dollar, one dollar, to pay the legal bills that Donald Trump has decided he cannot afford. Most Trump voters never contribute a penny to Donald Trump. They don't fall for that part of the Trump hustle. But the ones who do have the weakest minds in the history of political fundraising response. They worship a man who began running for president saying this. I don't need anybody's money, it's nice. I don't need anybody's money. Yeah. I'm using my own money. I'm not using the lobbyists, I'm not using donors, I don't care. I'm really rich. He never used one penny of his own money. But for those few weeks there in 2015, when he was saying that, Republican voters were saying that one of the reasons they loved Donald Trump as a candidate was that he would be incorruptible because he never had to raise any money. And now Donald Trump is the American politician who has set the record 
for the most money raised to pay for criminal defense attorneys. The man, the man early Trump supporters thought was so rich that he was incorruptible because he didn't have to raise money is now accused of being the most corrupt politician in American history who has raised more money for his individual benefit than any politician in American history. Donald Trump's performance in the hallway of the New York courthouse where he could not keep his lies straight is why none of Donald Trump's criminal defense attorneys can build a strategy based on Donald Trump testifying in his own defense. If Donald Trump tries to perform for the news media in the courthouse hallways during his criminal trials, anything incriminating that he might stupidly say can and will be used against him inside those criminal courtrooms, even if he is too afraid or too guilty to testify in his own criminal defense. Leading off our discussion tonight is Adam Klasfeld. He is the senior legal correspondent for The Messenger and was in the courtroom for today's proceeding. Also with us, Tim O'Brien, senior executive editor from Bloomberg Opinion and the author of Trump Nation, The Art of Being the Donald. He is the host of the Bloomberg podcast, Crash Course, and an MSNBC political analyst. Also with us is Catherine Christian, a former Manhattan assistant district attorney. She's an MSNBC legal analyst. Uh, and Adam, we have to begin with you because you were there. You were in the courtroom today. Uh, and because I wasn't and there is no transcript, I don't even know how to guide you in the questioning. Uh, report to mm -hmm. us uh, from the courtroom uh, the things that we need to know that happened in there today. Well, one of the things that was immediately notable today was just how frustrated Trump was. I, I think I said a little bit earlier uh, in the day in my reporting that uh, that Trump was at the zenith of his frustration. He was moaning uh, in court at the at a time when the judge had basically accused his lawyers of doing performative questioning, said there was no jury here. Then Trump groaned and said something, just mumbling something about a jury. It's a very cavernous courtroom. The uh, lines weren't immediately clear, but it was clear that he was talking about the fact that it was a non-jury trial. Uh, he was jotting down notes at one point. He threw up his hands. And then, as you noted, Lawrence, he went out of town. He flew out to Florida, and that was uh, the end of uh, his three-day stint for the opening week. Now, he is expected to test